Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercession for the saints according to the what? He makes that, that that's that's a that's a um, that's a something that that's a powerful statement that we need to pay attention to. That he makes intercession according to the will of God. Amen. We pray all the, we, 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 we when we pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He makes intercession according to the will of God. Not the will of who? Man. And if you kind of look at what's going on, what's happening a lot, you would think he makes intercession according to the will of man. No, he, he's making intercession according to the will of who? God. What does God will in this situation or circumstances? What, does, what is God willing in our lives? What is God's purpose? Amen? Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay, anybody want to, um, good evening church, good evening. from where we left off last time and what I've got is no matter what you go through god will turn all of that for for good but for those who love him according to his will and purpose now if you think you're going to go through let's say a little persecution trials fire with no heart of god or or reverence or love for god where he says where let's say you you cause others not to see christ for like like christ or his glory he will not be with you because it does not align with his word, will, or his purpose, which falls back to those who want to do their own thing because of pride, lack of humility, lack of sitting at the feet or dying. Amen. Because, and I, and I like how she said it because I think that's one of the most misused scriptures, one of those misquote, that scripture's like throw it in there where God will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, we like, people love to quote that scripture without going above understanding their full scripture and I think this one is all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose um, and there are some keys in that scripture that begins to uh, unlock things working together you know, especially the will especially if he's making intercession for the will of who God and all things are working together for the good of those who what? And I think that's the key. And somebody wanted to tell me why you think why you think I think that's the key. He said to those who love God. Why do you think I think that's the key? Go ahead, help me. Um, well what I was thinking it would be because if you love God you would keep his commandments. And um, doing things according, let me go back to the scripture, but doing things according, like, if you love God, then you will truly keep his commandments, and that's why, and that's how it'll work out for your good. Because if you're not keeping his commandments, then it's a whole contradiction to things working out for your good, because the things that are contrary to his commandments are not the things that are good, you know? And um, doing things according to God's will it's, it's, it's the best thing that you could possibly... There's no other will that would compare to any other will besides God's will. So I'm um, just keeping this going. You want to say something? I see, did she get it? I think she has it, but... Uh, Hi, everybody doing. Um, God's purpose. I believe that's the word that stuck out to me. And the will of God. Um... From the beginning of Genesis, God made it clear that everything he created was good. So when we know what God has created, to know his mindset, to realize that when he gave life, it was purpose. 
And within that purpose, it shows the will of God for each and every one of us that when we see Adam and we see woman, we see purpose. When you see life, you see purpose. <coughs> when you see the garden, you see purpose. When you see God's spirit be revealed through man and woman, you see purpose. So when it says this, for your good to work, work together, everything that God is establishing it has to come to a completeness. And in that completeness, you can see the purpose of God. Um, Stacy, you know, Hi, family. Um, just want to say that we have to be in a place in our hearts because all things work together for good to those that are called according to God's purpose, for those who love the Lord according to his purpose. And um, I know I'm, I'm not the only one, but a lot of us and people around us are going through so much, I mean, from death to, I mean, just a lot of things going on. And we have to realize that the purpose of God is that we're living in a fallen world. And even if, no matter if it's the closest person to you or whatever it is, the person might be gone, might pass away, whatever. We got to know that God already has a greater purpose. And that is, he came and he died and we have to accept um, his will. And um, even if the person died, because for example, um, a dear friend of mine, she's standing in the gap with me and my mother, my mom, she's a stage four cancer and we're just going through and just loving on God. And not knowing that even though she's praying and standing in the gap with me, that her two year old would die um, at a daycare, well, they're still investigating. She's one of one of the cases that the child went to the same daycare downtown, and now the two-year-old. And like, what do you say to a mother who lose her two-year-old? But I look back on God. He sent His only Son, and to die for all of us. And even if she loses her two-year-old, we may not know why God takes the child at that time, but something good is going to come out of that. So in all the crying and all that stuff, I still have to stand tall on the job to let them know that God is still in control. Um, you go out, you hear the cries of the parents. The, the children are just being out of control, totally out of control. And you have to stand to know that no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're faced with, that no, all things work together. Because when we look at it and we see, and even as I was praying this morning, and you could see the crown of thorns on, on, on the father's head. You could see the nail prints. And he did not just do that for his only begotten son, for the enemy to win. We've already won. And when we look at situations and circumstances, we cannot, even as Apostle was saying tonight, do not be distracted by what you see. We have to push past what we see and we have to praise in, in circumstances, situation. And... The Lord, um, he brought to me just one scripture in um, the book of Revelation. And um, one of the churches that he really was um, dealing with me about, it was the church of Sardis. And that church, and as you know, even as God is dealing with us in having his divine nature, he was dealing with um, just things that we're going to go through in the last days. We're going to go through tribulation. We, we're going to go through that. And he already made a way. He already came. He already died. So we know that we have already won. And it says, you know, that these are the things that he writes to the church of Sardis. Um, and he said, I know your works. I know what you're doing. And that you have a name that liveth and are dead. Be watchful and be strengthened in the things which remain that are ready to die. I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember that thou have received and heard and hold fast and repent. Therefore, thou shalt watch. I will come as a thief and thou shalt not know the hour that I come upon thee. Thou hast a few name, even in Sardis, that I have not defiled their garments. 
and they shall walk with me in white and they shall and they are worthy he that overcome shall be clothed in white raiment and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life and I will confess it, his name before the father and before the angels so no matter where we are God is still he's dealing with our he's dealing with us and he he has an eternal promise that we have to run after him and we know that there's there are going to be trials and they're also going to be tribulation but you know we have to hold fast and know that all things work together for the good for those that are called according to his purpose we're going to we're actually going to keep on one of my ponder on that one we're going to keep going on that one we'll expound on it a little bit more because i don't want us to continue to um I want us to get it and to it. And I don't want, I think sometimes when we elaborate with these different thoughts on it, um, we're, not, we're not focusing on the point of it. And that's one thing about as we do this, this, this study in this right here, when it says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, I want us to understand that and, 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 and um, grasp out of it and, and be able to go on to the next to the, uh, I want us to understand it and um, understanding that and, and people, and if we keep going sometimes you'll forget what the person said before that then you forget what the person said before that and, you're, and you're, you're, you're pondering but I want you to remember what some people said I want you to remember when the person said um, that all things that in loving the Lord if you, Jesus said if you love me you're going to do what I say you're going to keep my, I want you to understand that's a key. That's a key. The spirit in, in understanding, the mindset, the understanding the purpose. Not your purpose, God's purpose. God's purpose. Not all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called, are called according to God's purpose. You know what I'm saying? So if God called you according to his purpose and you're doing what God says, no matter how crazy it's going to look, some things are not working out for your good. Because you're not in God's purpose. You're not, it's not going to work out for your good. If young girl in the street, girl in the street, let me tell you something. Girl in the street, she's, she's on crack. She's doing this and doing that. She get pregnant. That's not going to work out for her good. She going to lose her baby. They going to take her baby from her, lock her up, and this and that. That that's not going to work out for her good because that the purpose, the way she's operating is not, there's nothing good going to come. Now, what happens in a situation like that? You see God's mercy. It's not, it didn't work out for her good. What you saw was God's mercy come in and with that baby, him, um, because what if the mother doesn't want to change? And the mother don't keep, so God works. The baby gets put in, uh, and gets adopted by another family and gets an opportunity to be raised up by another family. That's the mercy of God in that situation. That didn't work for God's good. It didn't work for your good. It didn't work for God's good. But God used his mercy to begin to get his plan and purpose out of that situation. Because God, because we have to understand that God doesn't do anything evil to get something good out of it. We do things that are evil. And, and, and the reason I'm telling you why we have to be very careful is because how God has been dealing with me a lot lately is understanding that God God says, be not deceived. God is not marked. God is nothing to be made from. Whatever a man soweth, he's going to reap. And, and the one reason I want to make this clear, because I've seen, and y'all know about, y'all know this, we see situations like this. I said, I saw this situation, young lady get pregnant. She talking about when she, she gets, she, she's having sex when she's not um, married. She gets pregnant. She goes testifying that God did that. That was part of our, our, our God's situation because her getting pregnant caused her now to really want to serve God for real, and this and that, and this and that's for real. And and that's interesting because people get behind and say like, really. So she takes no. There is no confession. There is no repentance. There is no. So you believe that God allowed you to get pregnant to sin against Him to work out for His good. Now watch this, but the baby growing up without knowing the father because the father don't want nothing part of the situation and there was something Mike said God has a plan that is great in the beginning but when we detour from that plan those things do not work out for, for, our, for God's good 
But because God is merciful, he will intercede and not allow. That's what he has done with each and every one of us in this room. He didn't allow you to get. He didn't allow me, you, to get what we deserved. What we deserve, what we sold is what we should have got. Now, this, this scripture is specifically making, talking about a certain thing. This scripture is saying, those who love the Lord. If you love God, you are doing what he is saying. If you are doing what he is saying and you're working for his purpose, then everything that's coming at you is going to work out for God's good. Now, the reason I want to make that clear, because it ain't even bad, it's still not bad on God, because, you know, we still got God's mercy. Amen. But see, but if you take that scripture and you begin to apply it like there is no, there is no, there is no process to obtaining that, then you got people going, let me tell you what you have. You got people going around talking about what they went through was for, for the good of God. No, what you went through, what you and some of us, what you and I, some of us went through, is because you was disobedient. Amen. And God just came in and took our mess and worked it out. For his good and what was his good to save you and I from our own destruction you ain't love the Lord I ain't love the Lord either but because he's full of grace and mercy he interceded and saved you and so the situation where we should have got death we got life you can't put that in there Y'all get what I'm saying? I just want y'all to understand that. And some people will try to put that in there and they'll be wrong. Because you ain't love God. You love God? I love God. What's wrong with you? Come on. People, and when you say people kind of get, they get kind of frustrated. They get look at you like you're kind of crazy. The script, I'm not saying that. Don't the scripture say that? He said those who what? Love God. So if, and, and God said, if you love me, you'll keep my what? How you gonna say you fit under that and you know what you was doing doesn't represent you loving God? And what you was doing not only was rep not representing that you love God, you weren't trying to fulfill God's purpose. But then, thank, if I say thank God for His mercy and and grace, because when we didn't love Him, He still loved us. But in this scripture, it gives a confidence to those who love him. And it should still bring a fear to those who don't. Yes. It should bring a fear to those who don't love God. Why? Because if it ain't working out for God's purpose, you in trouble. If it ain't going to work out for God's purpose, you in trouble. Just because, it, watch this, just because it worked out for your purpose, does it mean it worked out for God's purpose? In other words, so because you got what you wanted and you think you live in a purpose driven life by your purpose, by you implementing things going on. And the reason I'm saying it because this oh, remember God said be not deceived. A lot of this is going on with people today and you are seeing their success and their success came from moving according to their purpose. And they, God is not getting any glory out of what they're doing. But watch this. But their life looks from the their life looks from a distance beautiful. They eat in any fancy restaurant they want to. You sitting there worrying about bills and they man, what's a bill? I remember one celebrity, uh, she ain't even earned it. Her parents earned it, young lady. So by broken house, she got six thousand dollars just sitting in the front, <laughs> just enough. Well, we got you. Everybody in this room got a junk drawer. I'm sure if you go in there, you might find a three or four dollars. Some of y'all might have seven or eight dollars. <laughs> I'm quite sure some of y'all ain't got six thousand dollars just laying around in your junk drawer. But if we don't see the truth, we will be deceived by that. And you will think 
And watch, let me tell you, let me show you the deception. People will say, that's blessed. But that's not working according to God's purpose. Why? Because they don't love God. How do you know? Because they don't obey him. So if you use things as a measuring stick, you can find yourself being some marriage. You. Oh my God. You see on Facebook, they be looking happier than a every time you watch the television, some celebrity got a new boyfriend and girl, but they're like, oh, Shanaka with Shay Shay this this month. I don't know who Shanaka is. I'm just trying to make sure I don't call her name or something. And they treat it like y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying we have to see what I'm trying to get us to see because this thing is in my heart burning so much about what God is burning about. God said, "Don't be deceived." God is serious about a time. That word, man. We used to because I used to quote that scripture. Some some, some of y'all probably did it too. Uh, be not deceived. God. We used to quote, "Be not marked." God is not. Be not marked. Whatever man so gonna be. We would not pay attention to the first part. Just like we didn't pay attention to the part where it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you desire. We don't pay attention to sometimes the setup. And then it says, be not deceived. Uh, God is not marked. Whatever a man soweth, he going to reap. You can't tell me a man sowing to his flesh is working according to God's purpose. It's going to work out according to God's purpose. What's going to work out is about 30 years in prison. But God's mercy can get him saved while he's in prison. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we're gonna we gonna make sure we understand these differences in this ministry because there are people who are suffering because you stand on the because you're in the, because you're standing on the word of God, and then there are people who are suffering because you just point out disobedience. You suffering because you won't do what God tell you to do. That ain't glory suffering. That's disobedience. But when you un but why do we need to understand the difference? So I know when to repent. I know what I need to. I know if you gather it all together, somebody can think they're in right standing, but they're not. And if you preach it the wrong way, people begin to think that uh. Well, this all this right here, you know, me going out robbing people, you know. I, I, have you ever heard somebody say this? I don't regret anything I've ever done. I've heard people say that. Who, what I've done, I wouldn't be here. To, I wouldn't be who I am today. That's somebody who has not realized their wickedness yet. That is truly an individual who has not realized their wickedness yet. And what they're saying is, my success. Because how many know you? you can go through a whole lot and still obtain success? And they're saying, well, everything I went through, I don't regret anything I did because look at where I met successfully. Yeah, but look at all the people you messed up. And look at the people you still messing up in your so-called success. Because, let me give you scripture, because some of y'all like, I... Well, I think that saying is a very good saying. I just think, you know, well, the Bible says that, that you should be ashamed that those who, we, we ought to be ashamed of the things that we once have done. I didn't say, I did not say condemned, but I don't know about you. When I think about some of the things I did and how I hurt people, I don't get any joy. That didn't make me where I was. That was taking me to death. It was God's mercy and grace that took me to be a new man, not my old life. My old life was taking me to hell. And I'm ashamed. And see, until you realize, not condemned, but ashamed. Because you realize the pain and hurt that you were causing people. Do you know when you rob somebody, you sit there talking about, man, do you know that person? Did you know what that... I don't understand. You know, man, people out there doing stuff, but scam people out there scam. Do you know what you do to people when you scam? Do you know the hurt and the pain that you afflict on families for years? Not not right away. I'm talking about for years when you take somebody's identity. 
there are people who can't buy houses because of what people are doing and they never did anything. They are losing things because of what people have done. There are people who are fighting battles and had to get lawyers for something they never even did. Not condemned, but ashamed. Why, why is it good to feel ashamed for what you just do? Because you never want to do it again. You never want to hurt anybody like that. But when you don't feel no shame, and you're like, man, I don't feel, I don't feel, hey, you subject to do that again. Because you ain't because you don't think about the pain and hurt you cause people. See, if a, if a guy don't think about the pain he caused women, he'll get saved and still cause women that same type of pain. Because he don't have no regret in his heart about what he was doing. Do we understand that? So I just go ahead. Verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. What do y'all think about that scripture? Uh, all of us should have screamed on that scripture right there. Whom he what? Foreknew. He what? Predestined. To be conformed into the image of what people, I think sometimes people don't get these scriptures are not separate. When you get the revelation, because remember, all things work together for the good of those. The will of, they talked about the scripture, the scripture before, the will of God. He prayed for the will of God. Then he talks about loving God and all things work for the prayer. And then he began to tell what you were pre, what God's will was. He's now telling you what the will of God is. And therefore, he foreknew you, predestined you. Nothing can stop that which God, that's what he's talking about. His purpose is for you to understand that you were predestined to, to be a daughter or a son. And when you love him, you understand that journey because watch this. A father loves his children. And if you look at what God has been having us study for the last couple of week, weeks preaching, that that seed from heaven should produce a heavenly harvest on earth. Amen? And that faith without works is what? So the seed that we receive from heaven, which is the word of God in us, if we're not walking in that word, we don't love God. And then, watch this. And if you don't love, when people look at you, they can tell by the seed, the fruit that you're producing if you love God. You know what God spoke to me this morning? I, was, I wonder why he spoke that to me. Now I understand why he was saying. He, he showed me, he took me back to the scripture where it says that, and bear with me, um, he took me, uh, I think it's in, first, it's in Peter. It says that we are, um, When we purify ourselves, when we purify ourselves, we purify ourselves for a love for the brethren. When we are purified, it produces a love for the brethren. And I begin to say, God, why, what's up with you? Why are you saying that? He's saying it because when we get the word and the word is purifying us, it brings a love for my brother. The word of God brings a, when I begin to operate according to the word of God, it begins to reveal a love toward my brethren. If that's a, how many get what I'm saying? When you begin to allow the word of God to get in you, it begins to purify you to a love for the brethren. What is he saying? That the word of God begins to change your heart, purify you from a behavior, from, from a defile and unclean. Because watch this, when I was in the world, when I was hoish or somebody was a liar or somebody was a thief, you, who do you think you were damaging? We were damaging one another. When you were walking around with your seducing spirits and you are walking around with your lustful spirits or your greed, you were using people. You were hurting 
and destroying people. See, somewhere along the line, we began to not understand that the gospel, not only when it reunited you to God, it also reunited you to love people. Just like when sin separated you from God, it also separated you on how to love people. And when you operate in your own desires, your desires cause you to damage people. Do we get that? But that's why he's bringing you back to, I foreknew you, predestined you to be conformed to the image of my son. Why? Because the image of his son was not one, the seed from heaven didn't come to destroy people, but came to save people. We love him because he loved us first. He taught us how to love people by laying down his life for those who didn't like him. So, the evidence, let me give y'all some evidence of the Spirit. I know we want to think speaking in tongues is evidence of the Spirit. And it was evidence that God was present at that point. But the evidence of the Spirit, for the Bible says, He, he who dwelleth in love, God dwelleth in love, that he may be bold in the day of judgment. For as he is, so is, so as, as he is, so is, as God is, so as we are in the earth. So if the same seed from heaven is God, the Spirit in heaven, is when we begin to dwell in love. And when we dwell in love, we do not operate in a manner that brings hurt or pain or destructions to others. The fruit of the Spirit ought to show us how to love others. Joy is to show you how to love them. When we didn't have the Spirit of God, we operated in selfishness. That's why we had to be very careful about the scripture before that. When it says, those who love the Lord. Because when you and I did not love the Lord, the Bible says we were an enemy to God. And because we were enemy to God, we didn't mind destroying the thing that God created. We didn't mind destroying the thing God created to fulfill the desires of our lust, our flesh. I, I, I want to show this to you. I don't understand why God was talking to me about these things. What we, we, are, we have to say, say, God, open up our eyes. We have to stop calling things good, which God calls evil. A relationship that is not built up on the word of God is evil. Stop call, watch this, bachelor is evil. That's what it is evil. When you see people on Facebook and they're not married and they sitting there hugging up and kissing each other, whatever, that is evil. We don't want to call it evil. We say, well, they're just showing their affection, but they're not showing it within the alignment of the word of God. And how are you going to be showing love to someone without walking in the love of who God is? How are you going? I wrote something on Facebook, and the guy had me write this on Facebook. How are we going to Because I said, we, we be talking about trying to teach somebody about love. How are you going to teach somebody about love? And like the song say, and not teach them about me. It is absolutely impossible to teach someone about love. And, and I'm tired of Christians on, on T, uh, I'm, I'm tired of Christians on Facebook, I'm tired of them on Twitter, I'm tired of them on social media talking about relationships based on their experiences, they talking about relationships based on their opinion, talking about relationships based upon their thoughts, and they will not refer to the word of God to say that I didn't even know how to get in a relationship. So I can't sit here and talk about what I went through because all I went through was error. All I was doing was fulfilling the flesh of my flesh. It hurt. But when I came into the kingdom and I began to fellowship, I was called to fellowship with Jesus. Why? So he can teach me what love looked like. The problem with the church today is it does not know what love looks like. And it is still using the world. The world don't know. The world be trying to tell you, well, there's five different types of loves. And it's like, they are trying to act like they, let me tell you, I went into a class. I'm working with some people on, on Monday. On Monday, They asked me to do it in uh, Sunshine. They asked me to come in and work with some of their seniors. I said, I'm going to do it off the record. I'm going to go here to come in and talk to them. So they have about a couple of seniors. So I'm talking to them about relationships. 
for the last three months. This, this company, that was the last two I had joined up. I feel like that's it. All right. I just, I said, I'm helping my help out. My sister. So, I'm talking about love. I'm talking to him about relationships. What I'm telling you is a revelation I got in that classroom. That, that saint, the, what I wrote on Facebook was, you can't teach about love unless you teach about God because God is the standard to love. It was revealed to me in that classroom because I'm trying to teach them something because it's not a spiritual setting, but they don't mind if I go spiritual. They know, they know me. So I'm like, and they sitting there writing about relationships and they doing all this. And I'm trying to tell, and they like, well, well, I feel like everybody has a different opinion of love and everybody really has their own perception of love. And I'm listening to these people and in my spirit, I'm, giving, I'm like, this is the most ignorant stuff in the world. But this is what I think. Because if everybody has their own view of, of their own perception, well, I feel like what I feel love is is not necessarily what you feel love is, Devon. Uh, uh, my perception of love. No, you're just talking about your experience, which ain't love anyway. But the church has bought this concept. And that's why we're struggling in the church because we won't deny the very thing that we need to deny to learn. What is that thing? Your ideology, your mindset, you don't understand your rebuilding has to go all the way to the point of what love is. Your ideal of what love is, somebody making you feel good because somebody you like, you like, and I'm listening to them say stuff like this and they like, yeah, I, and the girl, one girl asked me, well, what if you know, and she, 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 needed, she, she, needed, she got a spirit of lust so terrible. She, she's, a, she's, she's an instructor. She's an instructor. She's instructing these young girls. She's like, well, what if you have more than one man or women at the same time? And she's like, <laughs> is that love? I said, no, that's lust. And she said, I said, then I had to tell her, I said, love has a character. And I said, let me show you that you can't love in a relationship like that more than one person at the same time. They was like, I believe you can. I said, let me, tell, let me show you that you can't. You can if your ideal of love is feeling-wise. Ooh, somebody going to get that. If your ideal of love is based on your feelings and your emotion-wise, you can love more than one person at the same time. Because you're like, I feel like this for you today. I feel like this for tomorrow. Well, I feel like men today. I feel like women tomorrow. I just feel whatever I feel. But if, you're, but if love has a character and the character of love, I said, so how many of you all would want respect in love. They was like, I would. I said, how many of you all would want loyalty and love? They said, I would. How many of you all would want commitment and love? I said, I said, so as soon as I choose somebody else, don't I break the commitment? Don't I break the loyalty? It was like, I said, see? I said, so you can't love more than one person at the same time in that type of facet because to love another person in that same type of facet is to break what you say love is, what you want from love. For minutes, if I get with um, Michelle, and I'm like, Michelle, I love you. I really love you. I am saying that well, if, if love has character, and I'm saying in my love for her is I've learned to respect her, to be loyal and committed to her. I've learned to be honest, and, 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 and I've learned to have self-control with her. I can't leave Michelle then go to Patricia and say, I, just, uh, uh, I love you and you're the one now because now I'm no longer committed to Michelle anymore I'm no longer loyal to Michelle anymore so the kind of love that the world is talking about that you see that you see uh, Will Smith that you see Jada Pitt and, and, and that kind of love they're talking about they're talking about feeling love And they feel something, they tell my feeling. And as long as they tell my feeling, they tell my feeling love. But see, the kind of love God is talking about, it has the nature of God. That you can have feelings in it, but the feelings are based off of truth. Does that make sense to anybody? And and see. The reason why I'm saying this because what Jesus is taking I for a new year predestined to be conformed to the image of my son. You got to know the seed from heaven to be conformed to the image of the son. 
That don't mean nothing if you don't know the character of his son. What were you called to be conformed to? What image is he talking about? Image means what outline are you? And since he's the seed that bears fruit, when you bear much fruit, you bring what? You bring glory to God. So when you are producing fruit, meaning the nature of God, you are now looking like Jesus. And when you're looking like Jesus, you don't lie to your friends. Lying hurts people. It builds up false pretense. It, build, it makes people not trust. Because when you lie to them and you say you're going to do something, and you said you were never going to leave me. You said you was going to care for me. Well, that's why God says to us, even when we get married, say, it is better for you not to make a vow than to break it. Because when you make a vow before God, you, you, you told that woman for sickness and health, and you made that vow before God. God said, you ain't got no options, homeboy. And, and to not do that is to lie against God. To not do that is to act. You think you're acting against your wife. You are acting against God himself. See, we got to, we, 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 we'll, take, we'll take five months to get to Romans 8 so we can understand Romans 8. And that's another thing, I'm going to be quiet, but that's another thing that people sometimes misconstrue when they say, I foreknew you, predestined you to be conformed to the image of my son. People take that scripture sometimes and say that you were chosen. But see, let me show you the error in that scripture. Do you know that Jesus, God said something, God showed me this, but when he, he had to show me this because I was like, God, I, because people, they will argue, they will talk about, I was predestined. He says, let me tell you how big this, this statement is. And he said, I, pre, I foreknew you, predestined you. Do you know that when Abraham paid tithes to is a day that what was in his loins some of y'all gonna get this revelation he was doing something for people that was in his loins and God began to show me that when he made man when he made Adam what he spoke to man he was speaking to every man That's why he can say, I foreknew you, predestined you, because he didn't have a word for different men. That's why when people try to tell you, no, they are, they are lying according to scripture. That's why when God prophesied to you, he's not just talking. We're so selfish, you think he's just talking to you. He can, God can be speaking to you and saying that you're going to be a multi-millionaire and, and he's speaking to your Lord. He's speaking to a seed inside of you. That's why he says when we are disobedient what, to the second, to the third generation, you are, you, are, you, are, you are passing on a generational curse. That's what it is. So when he said, I foreknew you, People take that as individual because they are ignorant to the scriptures. They perceive and the, their selfishness and self-serving mentality says, God, you're talking just to me. And God says, I'm talking to humanity. I'm talking to, that's why, watch this. Y'all got to get this. I foreknew you predestined to be conformed to the image of my son. In the beginning, let us let us create man in our image and after our likeness. They got they got to get it. In the beginning, God said, "Let us create man in our image and after our likeness." Let us create who? Man. Guess what? Y'all, women. Women came out of who? Adam looked at woman and called her what? Woman. Man with what? Did God go back in the ground again? Because if he did, he would have to speak twice. Y'all better hear what I'm saying to you. If he went back in the ground again, then he would have had to speak 
to warm men different, he would have had to speak too differently. But because he never went back in the ground again and he poured woman for man, he said, I just see one. All came from one. Woman and man came. The way God designed it, there is God, there is man, and there came out woman. All came from one. So when he spoke to man, he spoke what was inside of him. He, and when he spoke to man, he was speaking to woman too. So when he said, I foreknew you, predestined you to be conformed into the image of my son. He said, I declared that from the beginning and I don't change. So I sent my son to bring the seed to produce what I said in Genesis. And that's why he says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Let me show you a scripture. The Bible says, we have all sinned and fallen short of, the, of God. But when Christ get in you, that was your hope back to restoring glory. What glory? The image and the likeness of God. No. So when he said, I predestined you, he talking about you, you, you. I foreknew you to be conformed into the image of my son, to be the what? Firstborn among many brothers. You will be the first generation. Some of y'all in there, because you receive the seed, you will be the first generation of yours. You, you may be the first one in your family, the first generation. He said, who should declare my generation? I call like this. One time God gave me this. I'm, no, all you designers, you will not get this one. You will not get this one. Because this one, because I'm going to do this. God told me, you know, he said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm going to say it because if you get it, I'm no, but no, I listen. God told me, but this is it's the truth. He said this. There was a Y generation. They called it the yuppie generation. There was an X generation. I mean, one night God sent me on the edge of my bed at like 3 o'clock. He said, let me talk to you. He started talking to me. He said, the X generation is a zero generation. They, they, I, he said, they lost their identity. X means, I don't know. When somebody signed, it's ignorant. It means they don't know their identity. They don't know they're signing because in slavery, they would have them sign the X because they were ignorant. They didn't know how to sign their name. They didn't know who they were. They would, their identity was being stolen. But God says, I want, he says, I'm going to raise up what I call, and some of y'all have been with me for a long time, going to know what I'm about to say because I used to say this at the park all the time. He said, I'm going to raise up what I call a G generation. Godly, graceful, glorifies of God. He said, they're going to be godly, graceful, glorifies of God. Generation G. Don't play. Generation D. Generation G. Will, don't play, Will. Don't play. I know you. Generation G. Godly, graceful, glorifies of God. He said, I'm, he said, who shall declare my generation? Generation G. Godly, graceful, glorifies of God. He said, I'm going to produce a generation of God. But, who, but where that generation going to come from? The rising of the sons. How are they going to get there? One body in Christ and love. That's the message. See, the firstborn among many brethren of many of y'all in this room. You're the firstborn among many brethren. You are from the seed of Jesus Christ to be the firstborn in your family of the kingdom. Some of us in this room, we had a lot of religious people, but you're the first one of the kingdom. Some of us never had nobody in your family, no God to be with you. You're going to be the firstborn in the kingdom. But what God is saying is that you're not going to be the firstborn and not be in my image and after my likeness. God says, I don't do lukewarm real good. I foreknew you. I predestined you to be conformed into the image of my son. I'm bringing you to what I established for my, the fulfillment of my word in Genesis. Y'all think I'm lying. And, 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 and uh, Devon know what I'm talking about. And some of those... And, Elder, elder know what I'm talking about. Elder Kiel know what I'm talking about. That there is religion out there that tell they will tell you we was pre we pre -born. that God is God's will. Some people go to hell. That you know what? 
for them to believe that it was God's will for some people just to go to hell, they have to undo Genesis. They have to go change because God would have said that incorrectly in Genesis. If God's will was for, because he spoke his will toward man in Genesis. So if that's what, if what they're saying is true, then God, is, then God has error. Then that means when God spoke to man, what he should have said is, we're going to create some men in our image, in our, our likeness. Every man has the choice to answer the seed. Life, truth, sister. And there was not a division between the men in that situation. Until sin came in, and he said, your seed shall bruise his heel. Until sin came in, and then you began to see two different types of men. But watch this. Even when you see two different types of men, you still see God's plan is to redeem the other type of man. You always see God's plan. That's why some people didn't understand us when we first started out. When I, when we, when we, y'all don't realize, some people really didn't like the fact when we said we're going to get Cain. They didn't understand what that really meant when we, when we were saying at Miami Day, go get Cain. They didn't understand that Jesus' plan was Cain. Let me tell you what Cain would be. Cain would be the Gentile. And they don't fail to realize that Jesus said in the beginning, when the first Gentile, Cain would have been the first Gentile. Why? Because Cain walked away from the presence of God. The first Gentile, Jesus told the first Gentile, remember now, in him, go birth. This is the first, what is a Gentile? One who will not submit under the presence of God. He told the first Gentiles, so that means if he spoke that to the first Gentile, it applies to Gentiles. He says, he said, they're going to kill me. He said, no, I'm going to brand you because I got a plan. So he told the first Gentile that I had never designed for you to be totally lost all of I got to, if we could just get it. Because why is he saying that to the first Gentile? Because he had a, his initial word was man, he had a plan for man to be redeemed. Why? Because he had, because his word, want, he want, his word shall be fulfilled. Do we get it? So when I, and the reason I want us to understand this, man, eat this, understand. Because let me tell you why I'm telling you, I want y'all to understand it. Because as you begin to grow, you're going to run into that warfare. I'm telling you, you're going it's out there. Is it out there, elder? Is out there, and they're gonna sound intelligent and they're gonna go to the book and they're gonna try to show you in the word of God that no, no, that that you no, know what that there's some people because they're gonna use scriptures like he made um some potter for honor. So, you know why he was saying that? Y'all know why he was saying that? He was saying that to let, let, to let the reader know that even when you go left, he's still the one in control, in other words. God was saying that to say just because the clay go crazy he's still the one going to dictate it to do if you, what are you saying even if you choose that you don't want God don't ever think he ain't God don't you ever think he ain't God even if you choose he don't want in other words even if you choose you don't want him Hitler Hitler can be rebellious working for Satan crazy is all outdoors but guess what no matter how crazy he is he God he's still going to bow down how do I know what I'm saying is true the Bible says every knee gonna bow and tongue confess that he is so he is lord of all even if you choose not to obey, obey him he is lord of all in other words you won't get from under his judgment you won't get away from the situation and he will take and don't get mad if he take if he show mercy to he want to show mercy to if you if you act rebellious he'll still use your rebellious for his plan because he god satan never dictate to god anything not one thing. And for every punch Satan throw, God got a thousand knocking him out. For every plan that he established, God has already established one to crush it. See, Satan is like a treadmill. He's like a person running on a treadmill. Thank you. Always going somewhere and ain't going nowhere. And God is the one pushing the buttons. <laughs> Slow down. You ain't. I'm trying to get. So God, we, I just want us to get this tonight, man. To understand that you, that you are stepping into a kingdom from a heavenly seed. And as young men and young women. That's why, remember I told y'all. And, and, and I told y'all this. God used my daughters to bring this revelation to me. When I put the rising of the sons 
my daughter told God used my daughter no you don't need to make one for the daughters I like that one just the way it is and I'm like God what he said because this rising will come back to a oneness true women of God will not be mine being called the sons because they understand the oneness all that liberal stuff that, the, that all that stuff the world trying to tell those daughters of God ain't gonna mind coming and being in alignment with the word of God because they know that the sons that the daughters came right out of the sons they are one God did not go back into the ground and form woman because he would have had to say he would have to he would have had to have a he would have had to establish a new one for her also because she was no longer she would have been separate from his initial creation she would have been a different creation from his initial creation no she was taken out of his initial creation saying therefore all humanity came from Adam so when he spoke to Adam he was speaking to all humanity that's why he said Abraham in thy seed shall all nations be blessed he spoke to Abraham because he knew that Jesus was going to come in the line of Abraham through David. Amen? And Jesus was going to be a blessed. Jesus is a, that's why I don't ever let nobody fool y'all. Please don't let nobody fool you. Jesus is a blessing to all nations. The ground is nothing. It's the seed that you put in it that changes the atmosphere. God told, he spoke that to me. He said, they boasting about the brown. They boasting about dirt. He said, the ground mean nothing. It's the seed that you put in it that changes the atmosphere. Just to refer back to scripture to confirm what Apostle is saying about how, you know, male and female are, are one. In Genesis chapter one, verse 27, it says, so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them so when it says God created man he's speaking of mankind or human he created human or mankind in his own image and mankind or human comes in in two form male and female but they both are men they both are one so I just confirmed that amen Amen. The head of man is Christ. The head of woman is man. The order in which he formed it. Amen. And women would never feel the way they feel today. But the way women, why women would feel so ooh about that today is because men are so ooh to women. Because men has been so nasty and degrading to women that a woman don't even want that connection. She don't even want good. She she won't she because he has suppressed her and oppressed her so much. He has not treated her in the way that God desired him to treat her. So now she she rebels against the man because guess what? Because the man she treats the man as the man treated God. The man don't want to be connected to God. He rebelled against God. He want to do what he want to do. He want to start his own business. He want to be his own man. So now the woman has copied the man. But guess what? The man now has to suffer from the woman because now she don't want none. I'm, all, I'm my own man. I'm, whatever. I'm my own woman. I do my own thing. I don't need you. Boom, boom, boom. You just need to pray. That when you look at women, you, if you look at women's behavior, you will see the behavior of man with God. Because God is not marked. Whatever man what? He will what? Read. That's why it takes a godly man to really have a godly house. Why? Because he has to die to God for his wife to die to him. He has to die to God. And the areas he will not die to God, the areas that he will not die to God, he will find his wife contesting that area in him. If he won't die about his money, she gonna be, they're going to have some issues about money. And all that little culture stuff, all that little culture foolishness, you know, because you're a man from the island and all over the, and you think you're going you, you gonna, to, you think you're going to be able to, you're going to run your house and be Lord over your house, dictator. You ain't down, God ain't down with you. God ain't down with you because God didn't run you like that. Look to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus does not lord. He was an example of love. No, I'm telling you, because I've seen some brothers. Man, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all done seen some of your daddy. 
Wife be walking around the house with her head down like. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, master. Eyes will, eyes will make sure I cleans up the kitchen for you. It's my sleep. And eyes will make sure that I has everything you need to eat, master. Use the use the graces. You the greatest, master. Eyes have never had anybody like you before. Eyes can't wait to have your children. Can I have a dollar this week? I just want to buy a little something to eat. I just want to buy a little something to eat, Master. He called her a help. He called her a help. That means she must have something in her to help you get where you're going. I's gonna sign off now. <laughs> Go here. Go here. No, but you know why? But you have some women so beat down, they like that position. Culturally, they've been so beat down. Middle East, the women have been so beat down that they think that's a righteous position. That's not a righteous position. That's a position of a slave, a servant. Not the way God meant it degrading, dehumanizing. Don't women are intelligent and bright and wise? If God wanted her to be a stupid, he wouldn't have gave her no brain. See, American brothers, they too scared to act like that because they women crazy. <laughs> Who you talking to? Baby, I was playing. <laughs> now, y'all think I'm joking. That's history, too. Why? Because when Master went up beside his head, he went up beside her head. Till she got to the place where she's so angry now. If you hit me one more time, <laughs> what was the name? What was the name? Harpo, I will kill you dead, Harpo. <laughs> Y'all laughing? It's funny, but it's real. You got women out there, it's real. Shoot. That's why when a woman tell you, you meet a woman, and she tell you, I've been hurt, don't play no games with me. You better leave that woman alone, boy, because you might be the one where she flipped. Believe me, it's, it's a lot of women in prison because that dude was the one. That was, I'm trying to tell you the history of why we messed up. And all of us, many of us in this room, you got these masks on because you won't let God deal with your mess up to bring you to his love, to show you his value of you, and you still got these mess ups going on. That's why God wants to call you to himself first to get rid of your mess up. Go ahead. Amen. That's also the reason why no man can't submit. Men got a problem with submit to men. Just so prideful. Good. Okay. Let's finish it up. What time is it? Huh? That's not time. Yeah, we got a few minutes to finish it up. You got a problem? Something wrong? Y'all looking at me like, no, y'all want to go to bed? Yo, y'all want to just digest what we ate so far? Okay, we'll digest what we ate so far. Because I really want y'all to eat that. I really want you to go home and ponder on what those three verses. Because I'm going to tell you something. Those who, and I'm going to tell you, if you go to Prophet Barber, if you go to Elder Chrissy back there, if you go to Elder, Elder, uh, Elder Kill, any man that got more, got for, those scriptures have been used so wrong. They've been so messed up. People going, they, they done built wrong. They got, they got, they got religions who have taken those scriptures 
Man, God foreknew you. You've been predestined. I've been predestined. In other words, everybody ain't predestined. You know, some of y'all have been chosen. You lying. You are a liar. That is not what the scripture says. And that scripture is, 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 is giving you God's purpose. That's the purpose of God for humanity. What you see in Romans 8, 29, that's the purpose. That is God's purpose that he's talking about in verse 8, in 20, in 20. He said all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And that's his purpose in 29. For humanity, for man. God's purpose for you is that you be the firstborn among many brethren. That you be conformed into the image of his son. And God's purpose for you was never, ever for you to go to hell. God never created humanity. To go. He never created man. That's a choice of man. He never created hell for man. It was sin, man's choice. From the beginning, that's why he told Cain at the door. He says, Cain, let me tell you something, homeboy. Sin crouches at the door. Master, if you do good, Cain, should you not receive good? If you do Cain, make your choice, bro. Make your choice. I created you to master that thing at the door. You can master it through me. All you have to do is obey me and you will master it. Cain walked out the door. Not only, not only did he not master it, he went and killed his brother. See, that's why I'm telling you. When we don't walk according to the word of God, we kill one another. We wound women. We hurt. But when we walk according to the word of God, we love one another. That's why the Bible says, oh, no man, anything but to love. Love is one of the most powerful messages in the body, in, in the Bible. But it's a love that shows, it's a love that we show toward one another. When you got all these, these things, hating people, hating your mama, hating your people, got all this, you know, you, 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 you got to let God clean your heart out. God ain't going to accept you. God is not going to accept you hating anybody. Because you can't do something he wasn't willing to do. Amen. You good? Okay. Well, that's where we're going to stop tonight. God is good. And that's why we're going to, what does it say? It's time to love. We say that's the last word. Sometimes I think, sometimes I believe that we say something over and over again and we start acting like we kind of like okay, that's just what we do we don't believe we have the power we, like some of y'all don't believe that God actually gave that or he actually gave that and he, some of us in this, don't, I've seen people come to this ministry they never got the vision they never got the one they never, they never understood they, that's why I know they were supposed to leave because they never understood their true purpose of why God sent them I promise you, God didn't send you here to get a husband. He didn't send you here to get a wife, though he may add one to you while you were here. He sent you here to understand what he is doing in this season. My job and these leaders, our job, is, I read something. Can I, can, can, I, I just want to show this with you. Let me show you this real quick. And I was going to preach. I, I may still preach on something. That's, but I want to read this something right here. Second Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, second chapter says, for verse ten, you are witnesses, and God also, who devoutly, devoutly, and justly, blameless, we behaved ourselves among you who believe. Let's watch this right here. As you know how we exhorted and command, comfort, and charged. I want you to get this. As you know how we exhorted, um, comfort, and charged every one of you as a father does his own children, that you would that you would walk worthy of God, who called you into His kingdom, His own kingdom and glory. My job 
is to, a pastor's job is to charge you, encourage you to walk worthy of your call, of, of God, who has called you into his kingdom and glory. My job is to make sure that you walk worthy of your call. Walk worthy of God who has called you into his kingdom and glory by preaching to you Christ Jesus. That you walk worthy of your call. Worthy of God. Amen? And that's why at the end, I love this part. I love this part. And he said, for you are our glory and joy. The apostle said that the people, not money, not a building, not money or a building, not some choir, not all that stuff. Maybe. The apostle Paul said, the people were their glory and joy unto God. You are my glory. You are Prophet Barber, which is our glory. And you walking worthy of your walk. You, we encourage you to walk worthy of your call of God. When you walk according to the ways of God, we rejoice and celebrate. For we know that our labor has not been in vain. Because our job is just to give you the seed that was planted in us. And that seed produces the image. He said, I foreknew you. That seed produces the image and the likeness of God. When you begin to walk in the image, like, we get glory from you. That's why when men of God, when they see people going, they get no glory out of that. They weep and cry because they say stuff like this. And they said in the Bible, man, have we, that we pray that our labor was not in vain. We pray that we did not come and preach to you the word of God and all that, and yet your lives did not receive that word to produce God in you. Then it was, then it was, fruit, it was fruitless. It was unmeaningful. It was worth nothing. I don't care if you got rich. I don't care if you got husbands and wife. If you did not begin to walk worthy of God, to live a life that reflected the seed that was in you, then those who plant the harvest, I ain't, I've never seen a farmer happy who planted seed and nothing grew. And that's what a shepherd is. Someone who was planting the seed was in him and his joy is to see somebody's life being transformed. My joy is not seeing you get prosperous. You can get prosperous without God. My job, I'm going to tell you something going to mess you up. My joy is not even to see you get married. You can get married without God. My joy is to see you live holy unto God. To forgive. To be patient. To not quarrel among one another or be selfish. To not defraud one another. To not sexually molest or abuse one another. That's what a pastor, that's what the true shepherd's joy is. Because that's the harvest. All the rest of that stuff they don't create it out there is foolishness. God, sitting there joyful because the choir is singing, but everybody in the choir is sleeping with one another. Sitting there, the choir director, they be talking about, man, you know, in, in the black church, most choir directors are, are, are gay. I'll be like, you know what, we so foolish. You know why we so foolish? Who cares if the choir director gay when everybody else sleep with each other too? You just point out one factor. If you're not gay, I mean, you got choir directors. Do you know, I, I, it's a church, there's a church that I know that's right now. They got women, they got people, the female that's dancing on their dance team all got boyfriends and some of them are living with them. How can I enjoy them dancing on the dance floor when there is no fruit? Do you think the, fr do you think the fruit is the entertaining them the dancing? It's not. How can a pastor get any joy sitting there and these women dancing unto God but yet 
they one living with living with her boyfriend and said this then the one who lived with a boy she told the young lady the young lady because they think you know a lot of people think that's a one body thing it's true some people think that's a one body thing she told her no that she told her uh, uh they don't really mind we having sex but i don't believe that was true but what made me think about what she said is that don't nobody know they, they dance for the church this woman danced for the church so that means she get out of her boyfriend bed come in sunday and dance to the church in the church but according to scripture paul would have said if you don't sit your nasty behind down and let god clean you up you offer what make us think that you can offer any sacrifice unto God? God, your life is the living sacrifice, not your talent. But you got churches, you come in, you can sing. Oh, you can sing? Jessica, you can sing? Come on over here. Get in our choir, Jessica. No, but I heard Jessica sing, so we're not going to. No, go on, get in our choir, Jessica. And now you got a choir of people singing. And you got people in church who married and their house tore up and you out there trying to minister to somebody. Go bring your house in order. Did you not read the scriptures where he says how he has to minister at home first? But we don't got we don't became so gift oriented that we think we pleasing God and God is saying I don't even know you. Why? Because I don't see the seed. I see a seed of entertainment, a form, in a fashion of godliness, denying the power that what power, the power that brings a harvest. A power that walks worthy of godliness. We're too busy talking about we human that we don't even realize we're supposed to be mature. I'm only human. You're supposed to be mature. How do you want to have a seed? Do you not have, have we not read? If the seed don't bring no fruit, he cuts it off. And can, so you might, you might want to watch that do only human thing because God says this seed bear fruit. I'm not bearing. I don't, uh-uh. God said, I, oh, I bring, oh, I birthed children. I birthed them. We said the firstborn among many brothers. He said, oh, I got some children. So let us, let's grab a whole man. It's meat, man. It's meat Sunday morning. It's meat Sunday evening. It's meat. Let's eat it, man. Let's eat that meat. Let's grow thereby. Let's grow in the spirit. Though the outwardly man is perishing daily, but the inwardly man is, oh my God, Lord, grant unto me according to the riches of your glory. Strengthen the might of your spirit in my inner man. God caused me to grow spiritually. Why? So people can see your glory. We got a church that want to glorify itself. Want to say God, but glorify itself. How can a dead man glorify himself? Amen. God have your way. So we thank God. We thank God tonight. I thank God. Man, I'm growing. I'm eating. We're growing. You know what I'm saying? How, how many of us know you can't get a breakthrough until you see where you're at? You can't get a breakthrough until you see where you're at. That's why God been preaching the kingdom. He's been preaching. God says, what have you been preaching? What are you sowing? What seed are you? What's the seed in you sowing? What are you sowing? The seed, what a man is not marked. He talk about God because the man, the man received the seed. What are you sowing? Are you sowing you? It's just saying, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found what? And I want, uh, tell Elder Chris to come here for a minute. Elder Chris. Okay. 
How y'all doing? Did y'all have an awesome Bible study? Did you learn something? Can you give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. You are, you have such an angel that's, that teaches teaches you the things of God, and, and it's a honor to not only that he's a great man of God. I look up to myself, and I just want to make sure and kind of reiterate to you uh, about if you're not going to the process class on this Saturday, we invite you to come. For those who have already came to Lincoln Park in Fort Lauderdale, we go out and we evangelize the six strong that area in the business we're going to be praying for people we're going to be feeding people we're going to have uh the band out there are going to be doing praise and worship we're going to we're going to have an awesome time it's from 10 30 uh we're going to start evangelizing at 11 o'clock and then uh from there from there we will be doing praise and worship the preach word inviting people to the altar for to give their life back to christ and then we're going to feed them and so if you want to be a, a participant about this and you got some fire that you can share with somebody i know one body this is one place i come to is very heavy in evangelism and if you got that fire with you to come out and and really take take the land back by force by what god desires through his word because i know i'm looking at a people of faith so therefore we invite you to come out and come share the gospel and not only share what you have learned in here because how many went through the process class through here I better raise we, hand. come on i will then you if you're not going please come out man and, and i can guarantee you you will be blessed this is just chance this is a chance you get to share your your faith and your in what you believe in amen well go ahead. You, i think you asked the question might be kind of fooling um there those who have gone through the process class but those are not the same ones who graduated. How many of y'all graduated? Who's going to process class graduated this time? It's going to be graduated. The ceremony is for. Raise your hand if the ceremony is for you. Come on, y'all give my hand clap of praise. Yeah. That's what's up. That's right. Celebrate it. Elder Kill ain't no joke with that. I, 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 I sat in that class. I'm like, man, I, I know that word, but I'm like, boy, this ain't no joke. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it is so awesome till. I even asked him to come to the, the, to the church that God has me over to teach the people up there. And I'm, I am requiring my ministerial staff to go through this class to make sure they are on point with God. And I am going to use what, what he has. I, and, and my thing is I want to blow up what God has given this man of God. And it costs, I'm telling you, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And so I'm telling you, if you have not gone through the process, let me put this plug in for you. If you have not gone through the process classes, you've been here, you need to go. You need to go. You really need to go. It will make sure you are grounded. It, it is an awesome class. So I just want to make sure I put that plug in. So, um, but for those that you're, if you're not going and you're not, and you're not doing nothing, then please come out. Please come out. We definitely need your help. We want to make sure we show unity. And not only that, the biggest thing is, is that to show those, a lot of the pastors and leaders that's up there that are not serving that community, that pe they need to get out to serve the community. We are inviting them, but it's to provoke them to get, also get out and serve that community. Amen. Where is... Um Pastor Bobby, he left. Yeah. Um, okay, he did it. Okay, um, do we have any first-time visitors? Okay, well, there's no first-time visitors. Uh, we just want to say we love y'all all. Okay, uh, we're going to. If I'm gonna. Um, Amen. Amen. All right. Here, one body in Christ of a vision statement and a mission statement. The vision statement is to become the kingdom of God, and the mission statement is to build the kingdom of God. Now, point yourself and say, I first must become what I'm called to reproduce. Amen. Amen. All right. For the announcement, Sunday we have Bible study at 930. 
sharp and we are in the book of second chronicles chapter 21 verse 7 amen also we have morning service at 11 sharp we have evening service at 6 sharp amen also just a reminder um for the ceremony for the process class if you haven't rsvp do it asap because if you don't rsvp um you won't be able to attend or eat amen yeah so please yeah so please rsvp amen amen also <clears throat> for the process class registration is open for the people that would like to take the process class um january and february semester is open it's an eight week course on the process of discipleship so if you would like to um attend the process class for this uh january february semester you can um go on obicil.com slash process that's where you go to uh, register for the process class amen amen wednesday and friday is prayer amen wednesday and friday 12 to 4 Thursday discipleship class at 7 sharp and we are in Romans and we left off in Romans chapter 8 verse 29 amen this Friday will be young virtuous gyms meeting amen amen so if you are uh, a young lady in the age group of 13 